Can cyanide solve a mystery? In this video, we will use two cyanide complexes to unravel a chemical mystery on an unexpected appearance in a test tube. Hi, this is Scott from the ChemTalk team at chemistrytalk.org. In our last experiment, we reacted magnesium metal with multiple different compounds. On reaction with zinc sulfate, a shrub-like growth appeared on the metallic magnesium. This was unexpected and viewers asked us to identify it. We knew it could only be one of several things. Elemental zinc, a magnesium compound, a zinc compound, or a compound with both magnesium and zinc in it. To differentiate between the zinc and magnesium compounds, we decided on using a pair of unusual cyanide complexes, the ferrocyanide ion and the ferrous cyanide ion. Both give very distinct reactions with most metals, including zinc, that are quite different from their reaction with magnesium. Metal ferro and ferrous cyanide compounds have a wide range of strong colors and different consistencies. The ferrocyanide ion, also known as the hexacyanoferrate 2 ion, is six cyanide ligands tightly bound to iron in the plus two oxidation state. Ferrous cyanide, also known as hexacyanoferrate 3, is six cyanide ligands tightly bound to iron in the plus three oxidation state. Because the ligands are so tightly bound to iron, these compounds actually have a very low toxicity. Furthermore, the dissociation constant of iron cyanide complexes is very low, meaning the concentration of the ferro and ferrous cyanide ions is significantly higher than the concentrations of free iron and cyanide ions. So let's start solving our chemical mystery. The first step was to isolate the substance from the other insoluble compounds that were produced. This was done manually using tweezers. It took a while, but it was mostly effective as the substance had a distinctive look and was easy to pick out of the mass that we pulled out of the test tube. We placed the substance on filter paper, washed it, and dried it. The second step was to identify if it was a compound or element Dissolving an element in hydrochloric acid liberates hydrogen gas, while dissolving a compound would not. Sure enough, when we added hydrochloric acid, rapid bubbling of a gas immediately started. This meant the substance was most likely elemental zinc, and now we had zinc chloride. But can we do further tests to be more certain? It was time to test with the cyanide complexes. First, we did some reference tests. We reacted both met potassium ferrocyanide and potassium ferrous cyanide with zinc sulfate and noted the products. Zinc ferrocyanide was off-white due to impurities in the zinc. Here you can see the zinc ferrocyanide in the test tube. Zinc ferrous cyanide was orangish brown. Here is the zinc ferrous cyanide in the test tube. Then, just as a second confirmation, we dissolved zinc powder in hydrochloric acid and repeated the tests. Again, we produced zinc ferrocyanide, which this time was white, and zinc ferrocyanide, which again was orange brown. Reacting potassium ferrocyanide with magnesium sulfate gave no immediate reaction, and reacting it with ferric chloride gave an intensely blue colored compound called Prussian blue, which we'll cover in a later video. We performed these reactions just as additional references. So now it was finally time to test our mystery substance, which we had dissolved in hydrochloric acid. Reacting this with potassium ferrocyanide gave a slightly bluish precipitate with exactly the same texture and consistency as the previous zinc ferrocyanide precipitates. Reacting with potassium ferrous cyanide gave an orange-brown precipitate. So at this point, we were quite positive beyond any reasonable doubt we had produced elemental zinc in the test tube by reducing zinc ions with magnesium ribbon. We had further confirmation when we compared our zinc shrubs with video we found online of zinc formed via electrolysis, and the formation looked nearly identical. The slight blue color in our final zinc ferrocyanide preparation was most likely from iron and copper impurities in the magnesium ribbon. 
from what I can tell, we are one of the first groups to ever show this reaction happening, producing elemental zinc without electrolysis. This is really interesting because it opens up a potentially easier method of producing elemental zinc. I hope you enjoyed this chemical mystery. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, subscribe, and share it with others. There are useful links in the description to our educational channel and to the magnesium reaction video. ChemTalk is a nonprofit dedicated to making chemistry fun and easy to learn and to removing the negative connotations associated with chemistry. We hope to see you soon.